Mr. Matthew Quinn from XD. Thank you very much, Laurie, and thank you so much to everyone for tuning in today. Um, yes, for those of you who don't know, I am said I'm Matthew Quinn. I'm the Expedia Market Manager for the last two and a half years. I've been looking after the Highlands. Moving forward now, I'll predominantly be looking after uh, Inverness and the Aberdeenshire area. And I would also like to introduce today my colleague, who's also on the call, Patrick uh, Minnesota. Patrick is going to be taking over looking after the Money Space side uh, region. Um, so I'll just double check I can do this, Laurie, to see if I can actually allow him to, to speak. There we go, Patrick. Are you there? Yeah, hello. Can you hear me and see me? Yep, fire away. All right, so hello everyone, I am Patrick. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Matt. And yes, as Matt said, I will be looking over Murray County for, um, for the foreseeable future. And yeah, I am the market associate and just joined um, the team in Expedia and the AB team. So really excited to be looking forward to seeing um, and talking with you guys in the future. And of course, uh, yeah, going over all the sort of pain points and concerns and uh, anything else that will uh, help you guys to achieve your goals going forward. So, um, yeah, hope you will gain some insights from this presentation. And of course, if any questions uh, do occur, you can fire them away at Matt and myself, and we'll do our best to answer those questions. Perfect. That's wonderful. Um, a couple of bits of feedback for, for you already. Um, just to say that I think perhaps your, your lockdown beard is getting in the way of your microphone, so you're a bit muffled, Matthew. <laughs> right, okay. Is that any better? I think so. So if that if that's better, then that's good. If it's not, well, we'll just have to struggle on. That's fine. Well, just let me know if there's anything I can do to improve it. But what I'll do, I'll just start sharing my screen and we'll get the presentation going. Also, I've done a few of these presentations. You guys are the fortunate ones because now I've actually managed to have my walk and haircut. So I'm not looking as disheveled as I have been. And um, so, as I said, Hopefully that's certainly a visual improvement to what I was looking like a couple of weeks ago. Uh, right. Uh, perfect. Laurie, is my screen visible with the presentation? Yes, indeed, my friend. I can see you Great. are there, Matthew Quinn. Thank you. Right. So, guys, what I'm going to do today is, as I said earlier on, I've been, I've been doing these presentations in different DMOs around the, the Highlands over the last couple of weeks and months now. And what this is designed to do is just to try and give you an understanding of how the markets are moving and how you can prepare for the return of tourism. Obviously, we're now officially past the post majeure period as of the 15th, so businesses can open. Um, so what I wanted to do is kind of paint a picture of how the market has shifted what the story's been so far and what we can help you to do and how you can help yourself to get business back up and running. So I think the best place to start straight away was really starting to look at, obviously we have been watching how the market has shifted in different areas of the globe as it happened. So obviously as COVID-19 hit Asia, they started to work its way through Europe, the pandemic and the legislation changes that happened with that in order to deal with the the pandemic had um, obviously caused a lot of concern and a lot of hardship for people. So what we found was, in terms of good news coming out of this, the main story is people are still really keen to travel. They're already looking to travel. And in fact, when a government or a national body makes an announcement that there is going to be updates on when the tourism industry can take, take shape again, we start to see a shift in patterns. So what we're looking at here is a comparison where a market such as Singapore and uh, the Spanish market, where they had similar kind of, obviously they had similar lockdown procedures, but you can see here from within the middle of May, the 18th of May, the Spanish government and had made an announcement that there will be an update on the tourism industry coming on the 22nd of May. Now, as you can see, there was a massive increase from the unofficial announcement day, which had a spike in terms of booking straight away, that also increased on the actual announcement day. So you can see it was a three times increase for hotel bookings in Spain uh, when they announced the border reopenings and removal of mandatory quarantine guidelines. So again, just showing you that people are, are looking to travel as soon as they can. Similar story also with, with an area which has really been hit hard, unfortunately, has been the airlines. So 
airline ticket sales um, had been something that taken a massive decrease. However, similar story as well, as of the 15th of May, the Italian government made announcements that the removal bond uh, mandatory quarantine guidelines would start to shift the market patterns for them. So you can see here, we've seen, uh, again, three times over an increase for air ticket sales within Italy. So why is this good news? Well, what it's basically telling us is the airline side of it is probably more focused on obviously international markets, regardless if that's internal or out with Italy. People are looking to travel again, maybe for bookings much further in advance. So if you've been hampered by, say, the American market or other international markets who would normally visit one of Speyside, this is a good indicator to show that people are looking to maybe rebook their cancelled bookings for maybe even next year as well. So some information on how to react to that, which we'll come on to uh, shortly. But to bring it back home, what I want to do is just try and give you a picture of how everything's looked for the UK and Scotland pretty much since lockdown hit. So obviously lockdown goes back further into to March, but to give you a strong timeline, I've looked at May, uh, April, sorry, onto the, the 14th of July, so that the most up-to-date data we could pull. So what we're looking at here um, is a very, unfortunately, for the first couple of months are quite a sad picture. What we're seeing here is the red bars going down are uh, negative room nights, and whereas the red lines are cancellations. The blue line is where we would see a booking pickup, and then the grey bars on the right hand side of the screen, that is positive net room nights. So as you can see, there's waves across this, and this is where different um, different parts of force majeure had kicked in, different bits of information from the government, which was allowing or detailing when people could travel. So obviously this is accounting for both domestic and international bookings. So the only bookings that could be taking place at this point was essential travel. So people that were only allowed to travel for, you know, say if they work for the NHS or they had essential business that they were allowed to, to, to go to hotels or accommodation providers for. The main thing that I wanted to highlight from this, though, is there's a clear um, picture that's emerging for Scotland against the rest of the UK. Now, if you remember, the rest of the UK is um, around about two to three weeks ahead of us in terms of how they've moved and the legislation they've put in. So, for instance, England, I believe they got their announcement middle, pretty much early, kind of mid, early to mid-June that they had the self-catering providers would be able to open um, uh, again, unofficial, an official announcement day. So on the bottom side of the screen there, you can start to see a bit of pickup around this area. Now, Fergus Ewing's announcement on the 15th of June was the opening to allow us in Scotland to say that on the 15th of July, with recommendations from the 9th of July, we would be allowed to reopen our businesses. So thankfully the industry got the, the information they required and the, the update. And already we started to see a shift. So obviously at that point we were still in lockdown. We were still in the a situation of um, mass kind of cancellations because people couldn't travel for government reasons. However, the bookings did start to pick up and there was a wave of people itching to travel essentially. So that's the encouraging thing to, to mention to, to any of you who are on the call who is a hotel provider or accommodation provider. There is, a, there is an urge, there is a, a need for people to get back and um, looking for their staycation holiday as such. So also if you look for England, so that was the 22nd of June, they got their announcement, which was around about here. So 22nd of June, they were told that their hotel industry could open on the 4th of June. So you see a massive up pick here, a pick up here. And then again on the 4th of July, which they were, which was then their opening date officially, a mass increase in bookings again. So that pattern is something that is slowly emerging within Scotland. Again, we are a couple of weeks behind, but I really just wanted to show you this to give you a bit of encouragement to show how this could move for you. And to do one even better, what I've done is pulled it in for my space side, looking at a comparable market. So I spoke to Laurie about this yesterday and thought, well, what's, what is actually a good comparable market for my space side? So because obviously it's, it's rural, you have you know cities quite close to you, but you also have your own product that drives people to travel there independently the primary reason anyway so what i thought was actually the lakes would be a good good comparable uh, area for that so again you can see that there's similar patterns emerging from the announcement dates of say the you know the 22nd of june 4th of july again massive uptick in the bookings so from a scottish perspective you're looking at the 15th 
if we go back here, it did start to pick up, but then over the time, it is starting to really start to accelerate that level of bookings on a consistent basis, on a daily basis as well. Now, we have seen that the 15th, I think a lot of people were maybe expecting the floodgates to open straight away. I think it's maybe just a little bit soft at the moment, just as consumers quite naturally are just waiting to see what's happening. But the bookings in terms of moving forward, the booking window is starting to decrease. So we're seeing far more domestic travellers looking to book over the next 10 to 30 days, whereas the international are obviously booking much further in advance and rebooking their cancelled trips because of COVID-19. Moving on to some common themes which might be able, uh, might be some use to you uh, moving forward and you know, few things you can take on board. Um, what we're looking at here is some some good practice actually really more than anything else so 95 percent of all the bookings we have received since lockdown have been on a flexible rate plan but what that means is it's not none of these bookings are only five percent have been non-refundable if you think about it from a consumer perspective what would you book at the moment you know it's it's very very trying times it's more accessible it's more um profitable for a consumer at the moment to be looking at the flexible rate plans and the flexible offerings by um, accommodation providers based on the fact that you know we're in a fluid situation at the moment and you know anything could change. So what we found that successful partners in terms of bookings at the moment have got cancellation policies of anything between 24 hours which is absolutely ideal up to 48 hours. These are the ones that are converting, these are the ones where the bookings are actually hitting the, the business first so they can build a strong base moving forward. The second one is a spike in cleanliness assurances. So this is um, the updates for people searching for what activity are you as an accommodation provider or any form of business doing to ensure not only your staff but your customers that you are taking the correct procedures and guidelines to ensure the customer's safety. So we have fully updated our system to include all this information, which I'll come on to shortly to show you an example of how to do it. Um, but all the information from what PPE you're offering to how often and what kind of cleaning products you're using, this is you know very, very prominent in the market at the moment. And to be honest, it's probably just as, or if not as, more important than price at the moment. If you think about it, if you are being very, very clear with your with your customers and what you're doing, you're probably more than likely to get the booking over someone who's maybe not being as clear. And there's a couple of ways how you can highlight that. So there's either on the Expedia Partner Central page where you can tick through the box, which I'll show you later on, but also we have a messaging service. So when someone books, you can update the system to send out an automatic template to tell the customer when they book any you know, guidance you're doing, like. Uh, contact is check-in, contact is check-out, things like that. So it's a really, really important aspect that's really, really starting to pull through now. And then finally, from a, a theme point of view, we're actually seeing quite an increase in mobile devices um, for money space I see in terms of bookings. So I just want to stress with this, this isn't us saying go and do something on a mobile point of sale and far from it. Actually, it's more of an encouragement to say that everyone's sitting at home on their devices over the last four months shopping. They've been shopping to see when they can travel, where they can travel, you know, what offers are available to them and what information such as we've discussed, the flexible rates, the cleanliness assurances, that's what's attracting people at the moment to kind of pull through to this. So it's not about being, from an Expedia point of view, doing a, a mobile point of sale. Obviously it would help. However, there's a strong number of bookings already that are coming through from that area. Again, it's more just an assurance to say that there is a there is a wealth of a, a market who are looking to travel at this point. Normally, mobile bookings are very strong. We're seeing more of a corporate market and in a shorter window because it's just that that corporate booker who's looking to travel for a shorter shorter period of time for maybe a longer stay for a business trip as such. So the fact that we're seeing such strong numbers here is more encouraging to show more of a domestic market who are looking for a staycation. Um, maybe multiple staycations throughout the year. So again, more encouraging news uh, for anyone here to see that as something to, you know, if you're not with Expedia as well, even if your your direct page is mobile already, that's something to consider and how you can you can be ready for this return of business. And then in terms of if there's any actions you can take today, which I would definitely recommend, I mean these aren't going to cost you anything, 
it's just simple things that you can do to try and make sure you're as visible as possible to convert these bookings. So first off, um, extending your inventory to past uh, or into well into 2021, to the end of 2021 if you can. The reason why we say this, so first of all, we've obviously had a lot of um, bookings that have unfortunately had to cancel or been offered um, vouchers to rebook for later on in the year or next year. If your um, inventory is only open for 365 days, but somebody wants to book much further in advance, you're obviously going to limit that opportunity for people to, to rebook their trip to Murray Speyside. So the more you can offer in terms of rates and availability to next year, the better chance you have of converting. And just to touch on that, we, um, as an organisation, we had a couple of different measures to try and help businesses. First off, we started with the global cancellation waiver policy, which was designed to take the ease off uh, hotels and accommodation providers who are receiving you know, waves and waves of cancellations because of government legislation not allowing people to travel. This is how we've now moved on from that. So what we did was if you could opt in to take part in this and we would look after that for you, or if you opted out, we would obviously allow you just to continue with the process that you were putting in to for contacting guests. But we allowed um, customers to receive a, a voucher at this point to rebook if it was a non-refundable booking on Expedia or Hotels.com. Because of how successful that aspect was of the vouchers, we just made that applicable to everybody moving forward so that it was, people could opt out of receiving the voucher. It was something that they, they, they could get. So thankfully, that's been something that is seen as a, you know, a really a strong point for our, our partners. Certainly the markets I looked after, such as Inverness, have seen it as a, a really, really great offering back because it, it was securing more bookings and more options for hotels moving forward. So for instance, um, how the vouchers work if anyone has this available on their system, the voucher can be used only at the property it was booked at. So if you're someone who has, say, if you're part of a chain, uh, if you have you know, a hotel maybe in Inverness, Aberdeen, the Sky, something like that, it can only be used for that property. So it tries to keep the, as much revenue with you as humanly possible. If the value of the, the voucher was £100, it's all the and the booking that the guest tries to rebook for two hundred pounds. They have to pay the difference. If it's eighty pounds and there's a twenty pound gap, they can either use it on spend when they're at the hotel, or you will get the revenue within a three hundred and sixty-five day period of when they get the voucher was issued. So you're still guaranteed the revenue, and that also counts for if someone just cannot make the trip if they cannot travel. You're still guaranteed the revenue within a, within the year period of when. Uh, the voucher is visible to the customer, but also to allow you to regain that value later on. So again, this is something that's been seen as a, a strong element. And if you have your inventory open as long as possible, it's going to help you convert that back over. You do also need an attractable, flexible rate, an attractive, flexible rate, sorry. So if you are able to come down to 24 hours cancellation, you will see an impact in your bookings in a positive manner. You're going to see a lot more coming in understand that you know many of you may have had quite stringent policies for many years in terms of it's a month's cancellation, a week's cancellation, two weeks. Just think about it as how your business sits against someone else within the comp set and they may be receiving more bookings than you at the moment because they're being more flexible with customers. So if you think about it, if you were in your own shoes trying to book something, you're probably going to book something that's more flexible to your needs. So Keep that and bear that in mind when you are revisiting your, your cancellation and flexible policies. And then finally, make sure that you're fully up to date with your, your content and your cleanliness assurances. So um, Patrick and I have spent the last four months speaking to partners, basically taking things back to basics. And the back to basic principles that we've received that hasn't been pushing promotions, it's actually saying to partners, Right, look at your setup. What what would you do now while you're in lockdown to try and tidy up tidy up your, your offering? So is there a room type or a rate plan that's been bugging you that you want to get sorted? Do you have old pictures that you could update? Do you have enough pictures of your property? One thing that Patrick and I find, you know, that's with many, many properties across the country is, you know, if they're not getting a high enough conversion for their best available room, their highest ADR, their suite, you know, the one that they they want to get the highest uh, rate available for. 
if we don't have A, enough pictures, or B, not the best pictures of that room, it's a lot harder for us to, to get that revenue for you to build up your average daily rate. So that's an absolute key principle. And I said, that's something we took from our back to basics inside of how we viewed this. But more importantly at the moment, as we said in the previous slide, your cleanliness assurances are absolutely key at the moment. So if you can look through this, this is something certainly that's going to help boost your, your conversion and your visibility. So what I'm going to do now is just show you how some of this key information can be found and some key insights that you can also use moving forward within Expedia Partner Central. So when you open Expedia Partner Central, one of the first things you'll be presented with at the moment is the COVID-19 uh, information deck. So thankfully, as I say, and this is, is thankfully a lot of this now is maybe old information because we're now open, we're coming out of this situation, but there's a lot of this that will still be handy and helpful for you moving forward. So we've updated our system to include a, a, track, a traveler tracker in terms of bookings and searches on a particular destination. And I'll be able to show you that in a second. So this is something that will keep you on the pulse of where you want to move if you're trying to attract the right customer at the right time. Update your health and safety amenities, which we've just discussed. This is where you will find this. If you go in there straight away, if you haven't done it yet, this will certainly help you with your conversion. If, and obviously this was more to do at the time where we had only a clickable for essential traveler, this is where you could update that information. If you haven't already done so and you have got a special, if you did accept essential travelers, make sure you switch that off now to make yourself visible for the leisure traveler moving forward. But again, that was something we implemented very quickly to allow uh, hotels to gain that revenue for the right kind of traveler at that time. COVID key, COVID-19 information, which was all the policy changes that we had to make for the safety of our partners, yourself and our customers. And then if there was a guest either cancelling or to amend in the booking and something's came quite recently, that can be done through that button there. If you go in there and you now have guests who has either had to cancel or if they're looking to change the dates, depending on what kind of booking it is, you can do it through that function. And then finally, the probably the saddest one we had, which was, again, something we had to put forward, was closing the property either temporarily or permanently. Thankfully, there hasn't been a lot of permanent closures. There's only been a handful that I've dealt with. Um, but this is something that, again, we try to implement to help businesses move forward. So in terms of the track and the traveler, this is something that I would definitely recommend that you, you, you use if you are a business within my space out. And what this does is this can, again, be found on the front page when you go on. And this is showing um, page visits for consumers within that market to travel to your destination. So uh, money as a county, you can start to see that we had quite high numbers of page visits on a daily basis coming through for certain periods of time. So the immediate effect is well obviously seen here. You can see pretty much as of the opening, people are looking to travel again. So it's maybe a bit of a shorter window at the moment, but that's not to say that that picture won't change. So I this from a, an Elgin property yesterday. So again, as we start to move through out the changes in the lockdown procedures that the Scottish government and the UK government has, this picture could dramatically change. So we might see more for certain dates. So for instance, there seems to be a bit of a, a kick up uh, in Inverness, say the middle of August. Could that have an impact in Murray as people maybe are displaced to move and look for different areas? But also you'll see from yourself that kind of that middle of October break, which could be school terms breaking up again. Those search criteria for there. So make sure that you're looking at this if you are trying to use this for the right purposes to gain traveler um, pickup. This is where you can access this information and use the promotional tools in the right way to, to try and capture that customer. Matthew, yes. can I just jump in there? So you're, you're, you're still coming across as, as a bit, bit boomy and a bit boomy. kind of uh, a bit kind of muffled. Um, so that some people can't hear you. Any chance you could try and I don't know, be be closer to it or, or sound less sound less resonant. Don't be as manly, perhaps. Don't be as manly. I'll try my best. Yeah. Give me two seconds. I'm going to unplug okay. my headphones and see if that yeah. works. Okay, two seconds. That'd be great. Thanks. Is that any better, Laurie? I I should ask the room. Room is that better? Um, well, let's crack on and see how people feel about it. I can hear fine, but that doesn't help that I can hear. Apologies. 
Um, so, tracking the traveller safety and the um, support industry. So, health and safety measures, as we've mentioned, this is some of the information that we've updated our systems um, quite dramatically at the time to make it available for people to to adapt their systems as quickly as possible. As I said, this is absolutely paramount that you need to do this because the more information you have, the greater chance you have of getting a booking. So for instance, um, enhanced cleaning measures, what are you doing as a property? Um, are you cleaning high touch surfaces? Are you, the weirdest question I've asked any hotel partner over the past four months is what temperature you're washing your bedding in? And imagine if you're dealing with big industry um, providers who look after this, for, this function for you they will have the answer to that and the vast majority will be cleaning above the 60 degrees uh, Celsius anyway to ensure uh, the safety, but you can always check with your provider on what they're doing. But this is obviously there to ensure customers of the research that they're doing to understand how the how industry is dealing with the pandemic. In terms of cleaning practices, are you following specific, specific associations? So things like the World Health Organization, the WTTC, or even if there is a third parties that you are following as a guidance, this information is um, you know, paramount as well to how people are looking at moving forward. So there's far more information in that about you know, things like protective screens, hand sanitizer stations, the more you input it, the better. And then finally from myself, and something that Patrick and I are happy to discuss after the call for anyone who is uh, applicable to it, is our um, Revive and Relief package. So one thing that we have done um, recently to try and boost the conversion and helping partners is our Revive and Relief program. What we've done is we've obviously been monitoring how this um, pandemic has impacted different markets as we've went through the certain scenarios and different stages of this globally. So for instance, when we noticed it happened in Asia, businesses were reopening, they were maybe not fully staffed, they maybe couldn't open fully the hotel as, or their accommodation as previously planned. This could be because of concerns with social distancing, it could be staffing, it could be how long a room needs to be dormant before the next guest can stay in it. So simple things like that is throwing all these different curveballs at hotels and accommodation providers. And then on top of all that, you've got your, you know, your, your fixed costs, things about the running of your property, the bills that come in, you know, invoicing from people like ourselves as well. So we thought, how could we help partners use our tools effectively, but also give them a bit of relief for what we, you know, our function does. So the program is designed to kick in and we introduce it into market now when the demand starts to pick back up. So if you go back to the beginning slides, you've seen for the, the Murray Speyside area, the Highlands of Scotland, there's a massive uptake in bookings that are happening now and they're three weeks behind the Lake District and the rest of the UK. This is now the time where we've implemented this. So as of last Tuesday, Patrick and I have been phoning around partners to, to see if you're interested in taking part in this and it finishes the participation on Tuesday evening. What the, what the program offers is 10% off your commission for the next three months. So again, trying just to help a little bit if we can to, to help partners get through this difficult time. We are suspending hotel collect invoices for three months also. Again, to try and bring more cash flow to the property. But going back to what I said earlier about 95% of our flexible, our bookings are flexible rate plans. What this is telling us is people are actually booking our hotel collect model more at the moment because the customer keeps the cash in their pocket for longer before they pay yourself, before they pay Expedia. So again, you're not having to fork out in a time where you maybe don't have the same level of cash flow as you normally do. And then finally, we are offering 25% of what you spent with us last year back for visibility credits and a visibility booster. So what that is, we use it through a tool called Accelerator. The accelerator is used for you on key dates. You don't have to run it all the time. And it makes you the most, it can make you the most visible property within your area. So say for instance, your need period is all of July. You need to get booking straight in. You can use this quite aggressively or you can use it conservatively for other dates throughout the year and next year. So for instance, um, if you have a lot of corporate business, maybe Monday to Thursday, this is a good tool to try and boost your visibility for the weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and help you try to convert that way. 
So the only ask that we have for taking part in this, as I said, we've not been pushing promotions. But what we are trying to do is show you where we are seeing bookings come through. So the bookings are coming through from our perspective are through our fence channels. So our fence channels are our members and our package customers. So many of you may already have a members discount or a package uh, rate plan linkage through packages where people bundle things together. So the price of the room isn't as visible. So things like flights, car hire, accommodation can all be bundled into one. So these are the things that we're asking for to take part of this. All the information on this is available on the top of your pages on Expedia Partner Central. But if you have any other questions, either Patrick and I can answer today or we can pass out an information in terms of contact team that can contact with us to, to see if we can help move forward. But as I said, this has been a massive success for us moving forward. This a lot more people are taking part in it. And it's really already starting to help get bookings in in our market as well as others. So, for instance, um, we've seen typically in markets where it's closed in Europe at the moment a 15% increase in room nights during quite a, a during what they would normally see uh, in a busy period. But we're seeing that now, so it's definitely having an uplift. So, certainly have a look at it and see if there's you know if you have any questions, Patrick and I are happy to help. Oh, well, Matthew, um, that's brilliant. That's everything sorry. for you. Did I just crash into, I didn't just crash into you though, did I? I'm sorry. That's really? bad. Okay. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, and if other, if, if um, participants, audience members have questions too. Uh, so, so some really simple ones for me, if that's okay. Um, where are you seeing the um, booking demand coming from? So which markets are you seeing strongest demand for? Are from. Okay, so I can take that one, Matt. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, um, if you go on Market Insights, as you know, Matt had mentioned before, you will see a sort of snapshot of how the uh, current market is looking at for future stay dates. And what you'll see is, if you go throughout, you know, different uh, periods of time, you can actually see at what points of sale uh, those travels are coming from. And what we're seeing predominantly is that it's coming from the UK point of sale um, and it's coming in at like over 80%. So we're seeing that for now until the end of the year that it's going to be vastly coming from the UK point of sale. Um, and then also another thing is, you know, Travel Scotland are going to be releasing campaign that will encourage, you know, more travelers within Scotland to travel, you know, in Scotland. So in conjunction with that as well, we do anticipate that, you know, those numbers are really going to go up. Um, over the next couple of months. Um, so we do see that, yeah, domestic is going to be on the rise. And, you know, depending on how travel restrictions will ease in other countries, we could see more international points of sale coming through, but that's going to largely depend on flights as kind of Matt had alluded to before. Um, so, so, yeah. Okay, good. Second question. Um, so a little while ago in, in, in your presentation, you talked about the importance of having a flexible rate um, but also on focusing on your COVID security measures, perhaps potentially the good to go scheme, et cetera. Would you say that people would be more, uh, more disposed to booking a room or accommodation where a provider could prove their COVID credentials? Let's say it's a hundred pounds a night, as opposed to a 60 or 70 pounds a night accommodation where perhaps they weren't quite so certain of the COVID security. I mean, it's, it's a kind of simple question, but people are generally not that price sensitive in this regard. Yeah, so we're not, obviously what a property does in regards to their prices, obviously their business. However, what we are seeing is the more clear we are in terms of um, information regarding health and safety and particularly this information in regards to your response to COVID-19, we are seeing a greater level of bookings coming through because the more transparent you're being about your methods, the better you're going to see in terms of return. So again, what I mentioned there, Laurie, was we've seen that the market, in particular areas where proprietors have had the COVID-19 information updated, they've also got the function in guest relations, it's where you message partners either pre-arrival, the real-time feedback when they're here, and then once the guest leaves, the pre-arrival tool, we've seen success with partners already using this to help build um, trust with consumers as they're booking through this area. So 
certainly the more information you have, the greater chance you have of receiving a booking. Well, um, so it feels to me as though uh, the, the things aren't quite as terrible as they were a few weeks ago. People are, uh, certainly in, in, in when I talk to people, they seem a little bit more confident of future bookings and particularly around self-catering businesses, I'm, I'm hearing generally quite, quite positive reports. Um, is that what you're hearing? Is that replicated across the country perhaps? And what, what are you hearing kind of in the ether with your, with your giant big electronic listening ears? What things are coming out towards you? Are you, are you snooping, Laurie? Um, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so typically things are starting to pick back up. A lot of businesses are already, you know, seeing a, a pickup immediately for the return of business. There are areas that are a bit softer, typically probably ones that are maybe more, more of a corporate demand. That might slow just a little bit as you know budgets tighten. However, from a leisure perspective, we are seeing you know people already starting to book, already looking you know to travel, particularly the highlands of Scotland. That which if I'm saying that with the highlands at the moment, which is including Murray Speyside as a as part of that region. I think we spoke about it before on different calls. Um, many people within the domestic markets that will visit, you know, Murray Speyside in the Scottish Highlands may see your destination and others as already socially distanced because it's maybe yep. not the hustle and bustle of the London Underground or Manchester City Centre. It's already quite quiet for people to, to travel to these places, providing that obviously they're doing it safely. Um, but already we are seeing quite a strong pickup for, for these rural locations. We're ideally located in many ways, aren't we? So, Absolutely. You know, um, and I, I saw the uh, Travel Scotland advert on telly last night, Patrick. Um, so Visit, uh, Visit Scotland must have a, consu have a consumer campaign focused on Scottish destinations. Uh, and Murray Speyside was featured three times in last night's uh, on Sky Television advert. So it's quite impressive. I and mean, I think the first time but I've seen our, uh, our region on the telly uh, in a Visit Scotland advert. So, so good, strong support for the region from Visit Scotland there, which is encouraging. Um, so uh, no, no questions from the floor. This is a very quiet bunch today. Uh, I guess silence is affirmation, guys. So if you have any burning questions to ask uh, Matthew or Patrick, do do, do that. Um, if not, then this has been a wonderful 40 minutes. Um, and I certainly have learned some stuff. Um, I'm potentially interested a little bit more in what the support that you guys are offering to your to your members looks like. So so as a you know, if I, I'm just an average, you know, an average accommodation provider on Expedia, um, are there one or two things that you would recommend or one or two things that immediately you can offer support and help with? So in terms of immediate offer and support, so certainly the Revive and Relief program, as I said, is certainly something to get involved in because it's giving you relief in terms of cash flow. It's helping um, straight away to try and boost your visibility in terms of bookings. And we're also returning whatever you spent with us last year, a quarter of it back to use for your visibility. That's number one. But again, just focus on things like your, your content, make sure it's up to date, make sure you're being as flexible as possible with your refundable policies and update your information in terms of health and safety. If you do that, you're going to start seeing a shift in bookings. Um, so two questions. One, uh, our lovely friend from Shivas, Alexandra, would like presentation. Uh, can we do that for her? Can we do that for people? Um, is it available through the recorder? Probably, yep. So there's the answer to that one. Great. So that's done. Um, and from Brian, uh, Brian's asking what the panelists' views are around how the insurance industry has responded to COVID-19. Um, now that might be a bit above your pay grade. Um, I certainly try not to get involved in that, but I do know it's been an absolute nightmare. Um, mm -hmm. You know, at a, at a basic level, the insurance industry seems to me not to have helped uh, tourism businesses at all. I, mean, I don't know if you'd want to comment on that or if you could offer insight. <laughs> certainly I wouldn't be not only not qualified and it is definitely not <laughs> Laurie, so unfortunately not. Um, you know, it's obviously been a trying time for everybody. So, as again, I don't have all the facts. So I won't be able to comment. Sorry. Um, good. Well, so Brian, so going back to Brian, actually, just as it goes, my friend, uh, Fiona Campbell from the Self Catering Association will join us next Friday. 
Um, and I know that the ASSC have been working like drones to push this uh, class action around insurance. Um, so, so I suspect that Fiona will have some, some uh, significant and helpful updates next week. Um, but it does seem that the insurance industry hasn't covered itself in glory, um, I would say. Um, another one from Paul. Uh, as an Expedia client, what would I be asking Expedia to advise me on in order to increase my guest numbers? Yeah, I've just read that question. So I'm not sure if Phil understand Paul's uh, point there, but what I say, if he's looking to boost his visitor numbers, what uh, both Patrick and I uh, displayed there in terms of the presentation and the information about the market insights, these are the tips that are going to help you. So in terms of converting, Paul, look at um, look at the information you have in terms of your content. If your content's fully up to date, you're going to have a better chance of converting. If you have a more flexible policy, so in terms of um, your rates and your rate plans, you will also see a better chance of recovery. As part of the Revive and Relief program as well, what we're seeing is we're seeing bookings coming through from our kind of loyal customers, so members. So the, the members platform is something that's part of the Revive and Relief program, which is a fenced offering, so it's not public. You're seeing more pickup from there. So certainly if you look at the Revive okay. and Relief program, you should see a, a, an uptake from there. Um, and you're in the one from Mass there at Unakomi. So Mass is asking uh, if we, you have an idea of figure how many previously registered businesses in Murray have chosen not to reopen. Um, and certainly I would say from, from the, the tourism bid destination management perspective, not very many that we're aware of so far. So that's encouraging. But again, it's early days. So it may be that that businesses discover they're not sustainable over a longer period of time. But um, yeah, I don't know. What would you guys say about that? To be honest, a similar picture to your, yourself, Laurie. So, you know, normally if a business chooses to, to close, you know, for a certain period, they'll normally get in contact with us to say, FYI, you know, we're continuing this on, you know, because they'll maybe ask if they've got bookings on the books that we can deal with for them to inform partners. So I've certainly not had a great deal come through. I don't know about yourself, Patrick, if you've seen any. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but I do know that um, just kind of looking at the market, you know, we are seeing, again, like that, that spike in demand for, uh, for July, right? And uh, again, this is information that's available on Partner Central. So if you have a quick look at Partner Central and have a look at, you know, how the property is kind of faring over the next couple of months, you can then kind of take into account all the things that we had mentioned before uh, to kind of make the traveler really have confidence in booking with your property. So that's looking at the health and safety, that's looking at the uh, you know, flexible rate plans as well and the content scores. So um, so yeah, that's what I have to say about that. I think what, that's just to add a bit of context, a bit of context there, I think as well, I think what maybe Patrick's saying there is, if you aren't open, you know, use those tools to understand when you can reopen. So for instance, if you're seeing a spike in searches for October, and you're maybe conscious about how, or no, maybe not October, maybe pushing the boat out too much there. End of July, August, you can use that data to inform when you should reopen your business to be, make the biggest impact. Brilliant. That's great. Thank you. Um, well, off the presses from our web developers, beep, 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 beep. Um, as of five minutes ago, uh, our website now offers, if you have a listing on it, you the opportunity to go on and enter your COVID security status, whether you have good to go, what you are doing, um, and upon submission of that, uh, the website will display uh, by means of a traffic light system, whether you fully open, partially open or closed, and will give visitors to the site um, an indication of that status. Uh, I think further, it will also display in a, a single search um, who is open, where they're open and how they're open. So uh, for any of you guys on the webinar today who have a listing, crack on and update it. If you don't have a listing, go on and create one. Um, and then you can let one know uh, how open, closed or otherwise you are. Um, and certainly we heard some good news from Visit Scotland this week, which is that there are, I think over 400 businesses in Murray Speyside who have registered the good to go, uh, the good to go uh, protocol measure quality stamp so that's really encouraging and i think people are are focusing on that now so um any more for any more from the floor uh, if not we will all get off and get your lunches or your mid-afternoon snacks so we will send out a link 
to this uh, webinar presentation stroke video. Uh, we'll cut off the, the scraggy bits at the beginning and we'll see if we can tidy up Matthew's sound a bit so that when you're watching it uh, at your leisure, it's perhaps a little more easy to hear. Um, so, so thank you everybody. Thank you mostly to Patrick and to Matthew for coming along and speaking to us. It's always a pleasure to have our friends from Expedia. Thank you to everybody who attended. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. I know sometimes people get webinar, webinar on we because there are lots of them on. So we try and only select those that are going to bring you a bit of value. So once again, Matthew and Patrick, nice to meet you. We're very glad you've you been as able well. to spend some time with us. It's been a pleasure today. Um, I'm sure that if anybody has questions after the fact, they can chuck them into me and I can pass them on. Uh, anybody needs a connection into either Patrick or Matthew, just chuck an email on in and we'll get that to happen. So thank you very much, everybody.